Hey Buns, you know, when I first started playing Final Fantasy XIV, I loved how much depth that the game had. I loved how complex things were, but I was also really confused and overwhelmed by a lot of that, like many new players are. In fact, me being confused about gardening is the whole reason I started this YouTube channel to begin with. So I wanted to go on social media and ask you, what was some of the most confusing things for you as a new player in Final Fantasy XIV? I have not looked through these comments yet. So we are gonna look through them for the first time together right now. I'm really excited. And maybe we will even clarify some of these perplexing things. Well, 14 was my first MMO and also my first 3D game with separate camera and character controls, so movement. I spent a lot of time running into walls, <laughs> objects, uneven surfaces. I once got stuck in a stall in Kugane. Oh, honey. <laughs> I hate to laugh, but hey, <laughs> when you got stuck in Kugane, would you say that it stalled your adventure? <laughs> I'm sorry. A friend Dave commented, who is one of my tanks in my T group, said, following a rotation on GCD abilities, off GCD abilities, and weaving one between the other, it took me a while to realize there was an optimal way to do stuff when I started. I was just mashing buttons to do stuff. I think most people do start out that way. I definitely did. But sometimes when you get into the harder content, it becomes necessary to learn that rotation. In late 1.0, early 2.0, when you could still allocate stat points, I allocated everything into strength because I thought it would make my arrows hit harder. <laughs> I didn't know that was not the case until Heaven's War. I mean, the logic is sound. If you pull back hard enough, I mean, that takes a lot of strength. I don't know if you ever actually shot a bow, but... When I first did the Crystal Tower Raid, I didn't know what alliances were, what the mark means, or the mechanics. There was only hate and salt, and made me almost quit the raid part altogether. Well, I think that is what the Crystal Tower is made of. I'm pretty sure it's just a giant salt crystal. It took me quite a while to figure out the map system. For example, there are seemingly different versions of the same map that appear in the same map window, and each has different info and functionality. And provided a picture, why is this first map different from the second map? How do you change between the first and second map versions? So if you look here on the top left, this one says Norbrand and Lakeland. And so this is a map of Lakeland. If you look on the right, this one just says Norvrant, but it does not specify a specific region of Norvrant. So this indicates that you're looking at the general map of Norvrant. So that's why it has less detail on it. And if you were to click on Lakeland, it would take you to the Lakeland map. I see how that would be confusing, but I hope that does help. Probably the limit break. People going LB in chat. And I said, they're like, left bumper? <laughs> I don't play with a controller. When I started as a gladiator, I didn't know I was supposed to aggro enemies and I constantly stopped so someone would take the lead. But when I stopped, party stopped behind me. I was so confused. It's like that John Travolta meme and you're just like, well, is anybody gonna? Currencies, want a chest piece? Okay, go do this raid and get a blue chair. Then take the chair to this guy and get a lamp. If you give him a lamp and a Snickers, He'll give you a flip-flop. Collect 72 flip-flops and turn them in with a lamp and a chair. <laughs> He'll give you... I didn't understand the glamour dresser and had been carrying all this old gear for fashion reasons, individually glamouring every new armor piece. So I actually have a video about that in case anyone else is uh, confused about it. I will put a link to that in the description box down below. I fought Ifrit for the main story quest as a thaumaturge at Realm Reborn launch and I only used Blizzard and Blizzard 2 as I thought fire would heal him. <laughs> this is based on my experiences in FF11, where he does absorb fire damage. Okay, so it was like, I mean, you're applying the logic consistently. Imagine my surprise when I learned the elemental wheel was not a thing in FF14. Since I was a gnome when I played WoW, when I started 14 as a Lala, I did not know why people came up to me and started to pet me and trade me cookies. But hey, three years later, nothing's changed. The systems within systems. The systems in place are good, but they are confusing as hell for new players. Battle system has its own rules. The crafting system is different. Then there's gathering, which is not the same as crafting. The gold saucer, Eureka, Baja, etc. Yeah, I think that's a really good point and a good perspective to have from someone who's more new to the game because if you've been playing the game for a while, it's like you kind of take it for granted that you understand the battle system, crafting system, gathering, all these other things. So when a new system comes into the game that has different rules, you don't really think about it. You're just like, oh, well, I'll learn the new rules. But as a new player, if you have all these different sets of rules to learn at once from all these different places in the game, I can definitely see how that would be very, very overwhelming. 
A friend of mine leveled to 60 as a gladiator and willingly unequipped the job crystal because playing as a gladiator sounded cooler than paladin. He didn't know the paladin skills were unlocked after level 30. Please do not do not do this. Do not do this, please. After level 30, you're not a gladiator. You're a sadiator. Professions, crafters especially, are so much more complex than in other MMOs and I'm still learning how they work. They're actually really fun once you get into them, but I fully expected crafting to be one click equals craft, like in WoW for example. Yeah, I also found crafting to be very intimidating and the only way that I was able to sort through it was to remove all the buttons from my bars that I had there already and then put each one back individually reading each tooltip and trying to sort them out in a way that seemed organized based on what I thought the buttons did. Trying to figure it out for yourself in that way I think will teach you more than going straight to a guide, though guide might be helpful afterward. Learning how to move and the MMO terminology, AOE, uptime, dot, DPS, loss, drifting, pug, proc, LFG, WB, Wizard of C. <laughs> it was a whole new language. Well, for that, I would encourage you to stay tuned to the channel because I have something relating to that planned. I walked all the way from Gridania to Ulda to meet my partner in game at level 12 before either of us unlocked the teleports airships. What do you get the airship at like level 15, right? Ashen Bride said, I came from WoW and I didn't realize how HOTS, like regen, acted as an aggro generator since it was never an issue in that game. I had a tank that would remove my regen between packs and I would reapply, but nobody ever told me how it worked. I'm really glad you pointed this out in case there might be tanks who see their healer doing this. They might be new and if you know they're new, it might be worth letting them know that the regen does produce aggro, but at the same time, now that Shadowbringers has buffed tank stance aggro generation so much, as a tank, it should not be hard for you at all to still keep the mobs on you. 14 was my first MMO, so I thought a tank was a super duper damage dealer. Tanks blow stuff up, right? I spent 10 minutes in character creation trying to figure out who my patron god will be, only to find out it had absolutely zero impact on anything. Well, that might change in Endwalker. I know that we're getting a raid series that's about the different gods, so maybe they'll like reference it at some point then. 14 was my first MMO. I had no idea what tanking, healing, and DPS was, so as a white mage, I aimlessly walked around enjoying the dungeon while the party was quickly dying. It's like vibe mage. Getting used to the fact that telegraphed attack areas could be occupied as soon as the shape left the floor rather than waiting for the full attack animation to finish. Yeah, this is a thing that you will get used to the more that you play. And at first I found annoying, but over time I started to appreciate it. There's so many different animations that if you were to watch the animation for the damage going out, it would be really confusing and hard to predict your movement. Being told to follow the mechanics. At the time, I thought that's what machinists were called. So I followed the two in our party everywhere. We wiped a lot. <laughs> That's actually really cute. Unlockable features like glams, dyes, or even the chocobo. Like how was I supposed to know a random quest in the middle of nothing would give me these things? For that, I would recommend that you take a look at the Gamer Escape article on unlockable features so you can check to see, according to your level, what things you could have unlocked already. Wondering why is everyone running and pray? I missed the ID key on my first run through and basically missed half the dungeon because I wasn't able to catch up. Such ambulation was not my intention. One of the things that confused me the most is that the number Numbering for spells is not a linear progression. Cure 2 is better than Cure 1, but Cure 3 is an AoE. Ver Arrow 2 is not a straight upgrade on Ver Arrow, and Fire 2 is an AoE. Yeah, I think that's a really good point, and that's something that can be very confusing when you're starting a new job. FF14 was my first ever MMO, so I used to think the orange markers meant to stand here. <laughs> I died so much and healers gave up on me after the third death. I guess I was a Dragoon maid since before starting the game. The Fantasia I got and threw away. I didn't know what it does. Realizing I could use the Aetherite to teleport. I spent most of Realm Reborn walking. I felt like a huge idiot. This is probably more me being dumb, but when I picked up Weaver, I marched out of Ulda and promptly died trying to kill bees with my sewing needle. It's like, oh. You, you want to final sting me? I don't think so. <laughs> final sting you today. Switching jobs, I ended up naked in the middle of Ulda and some guy came up to me and was like, uh, 
do you need help? <laughs> Could you relate to any of the responses that were given here? If so, let me know in the comment section down below. Let me know what has been confusing for you as a new player or when you were a new player. I want to thank everyone who responded to these questions on YouTube or on Twitter. I really, really enjoyed reading through all of these. So thank you for that. If you like this video, please consider supporting the channel on Patreon or on Twitch. You can also support the channel for free by clicking the subscribe button or by sharing this video with your fellow Warriors of Light. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye.